Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. My name is John, your host as always, and I hope you're all doing well as I always do. This is the preview of West Ham's fourth away game of the Europa Conference League Group B campaign where we travel to Romania to the Stau Stadium, also known as the National Arena, to take on FCSB, also known as Stau Bucharest, for an 8 o'clock kickoff this Thursday night live on BT Sport 3. So it's not our home BT Sport 2 is not our home for this season because they're showing the Arsenal game. As always, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor, 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website. But as you can see from the icon that's up here, somewhere about there, I think, um, there are also polo shirts and sweatshirts by Admiral and Umbro. There's also Claret, there's also Claret and Blue track jackets and sweatshirts and t-shirts so go check those out any purchases you make through the link in the description below the commission that the channel would normally be getting i'll be sending directly on to iron supporting food banks the charity based in the newham area that are helping those in the newham area and the essex county and slightly further afield of that as well for that matter that are really struggling at these very difficult times to put food on their tables so guys go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt depending on what you're purchasing you'll be saving between five and fifteen quid in comparison to the club shop and for example if you bought the retro replica of the uh the home shirt that this season's home shirt is based on you're saving 55 percent it's ridiculous i was gonna say 55 quid you almost are but it's it's ridiculous the amount of money you save from it so you'll be helping those the less fortunate than you and i as well so guys let's start off this video by talking about the officials unfortunately from one point of view they're all german so Hopefully there's not going to be that national bias coming into the game. Don't think it's going to make much of a difference if it is, because we've won the group anyway. Just be nice to go out and win it completely. You know, not lose it, not lose it, and throw it away like we did last season. Albeit a massively decent wonder goal. Other other than that, we would have gone through unbeaten, I reckon. Now the referee for this game is Sash Sashka Stiegman. I think you pronounce that. His assistants are Marco Ochmuller and Christoph Gunch. The fourth official is Florian Badstumba. Badstumba? Like, I, I'm not very good with German. Um, so, guys, that's it. No other officials, no VAR, because it's the Conference League. So, again, going back to old school football. Now, last time out, as you guys remember, we beat them 3-1 at home nearly two months ago now, despite being 1-0 down at halftime from a good goal from Cordea, who I'll come on to in a minute as well. In the second half, we scored... Um, a good penalty from Bowen and goals from Emerson and Antonio. Now, Star Bucharest are yet to score at home in the Conference League, but in all competitions, their highest joint goal scorers at home are Compagno and Cordea, both with three goals each. Yet either another team that is yet to register an assist in this league. Or well, this competition, I should say, it's mental. It's, uh, it's they do love an in, uh, an individual goal. These foreign teams and fair play to them, but it's, it just shows what their abilities are. Now, after losing two one last night against FC University Clay, I think you pronounced that. No fucking clue. Uh, despite having the lion's share of the possession, they were playing against a ten men side and still lost it two two one. They were able to get a goal back towards the end of the end of the game but didn't really have that much. I didn't see it. I was just looking at the match report as it was coming through. They are 7th seventh, seventh in the Superliga, winning 5, drawing 5, and losing 3. Now, looking at their injuries, left-back Pentiru and centre-back Cristea are still both out with the knee problems, as I discussed in the... Um, uh, the home review, the, sorry, the home preview that a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of months ago now it should be. Uh, Right-back Popescu is still... Well, it's like, it's like, I can't say he's still out, but he's slowly returning from cruciate, um, cruciate ligament rupture. He did make a few, he did have a few minutes on the on the pitch last night in their league game, but other than that, their injuries are still the same. Uh, Muklescu will will miss this game due to the maximum yellow cards he he picked up in their draw and the two wall draw against Anderlecht. And Quedea is a risk of suspension due to being one yellow away from five maximum yellow cards. In the, in the conference league so slight things to look out for to a degree but not really that important because i don't really know how important that is going to be to anybody i mean at the end of the day if we beat them they're all but out anyway so it doesn't really well they are out so it doesn't really make, make a difference if he gets booked or not might follow through to the next season possibly but i doubt it because you know that the yellow card booking will get 
rescinded at some point anyway during during the campaign for this competition. Now Nikolai Dika, I think you pronounce that, who's the manager who's used the He's used quite a few different formations. When he played, when we played them, it was a four-one-four-one, but he's also used four-three-three and a four-three-two-one diamond formation as well. So, yeah, I, you know, I just whenever I see that four-three-two-one, it's like four-three-two-one. You know, it, show me age now. I know, but four-three-two-one. <laughs> you guys know what I'm, the older generations will know what I'm talking about. Um, but over the last few conference games, he's, he has used that, and as they're at home, I'm really gonna. I'm thinking we're seeing a 4-3-3. I really, really think we will be. Now, as a result of that, we should come on to the starting eleven in a minute, but as a result of that, I do genuinely think of 3-5-2 or 5-3-2, whichever way you want to look at it, rather than the 4-2-3-1, is going to be the best way of exploiting that 4-3-3 formation. Or, or even if they go into 4-3-2-1, I'm, I'm not doing it again, but if they, if they go into that formation as well, I still think... A massively attacking wing back formation, and I, yeah, I really think it should be. But anyway, uh, turning to West Ham at the time of this recording, there aren't any real news in terms of injuries, um, but we are still undefeated in all European games. The only only British team to do so, from what I understand, is well, and as we all know, we are top of the group with a game to spare. Now, obviously, we've got Palace at the weekend, but. You know, there isn't really much to talk about from that point of view because I go into the preview more on Friday. Um, you know, as we know, Fabianski sustained a knee injury during the Man United game. And to be fair, he should have been subbed off right at that moment um, because you could argue that's one of the reasons why we conceded that goal. Don't get me wrong, it was a cracking goal. But I, do, I said at the time, I think Fabianski could do better. He should have been subbed off when he had that injury. Um, you know, but fair play to Arioli came on and had a cracking second half, made some very good saves as well. Paqueta is 50% chance of returning for this fixture, but it's too early for Cornet still by the looks of things, at least at the time of this recording. By the time you guys are seeing this, is probably news, more news updates on that. Um, could we see a word again? There's a good, there's a, there's a good chance. There's a very, very good chance, and that brings us now round nice, nicely round to the starting eleven that I'm hoping we're, that Moyes is going to point out. I don't think he will in any shape or thing form. I hope he doesn't return, uh, revert to type and put up a, a weakened side. But I get it because we've got Palace at the weekend. But this is the starting eleven. I'm hoping we're going to get to see. Areola in goal with a back three of Johnson, Aguirre, and Ogbonna. Kera and Emerson as the wing backs with Coventry, Downs and Benrama in midfield supporting Bowen and Skamaka up front. Yep, you saw it. I went strong. I've gone strong. I think we should. I really, really think we should go as strong as possible. I've, I can't see every, each and every single player playing in this game. I really can't because it's David Moyes. But I do think... We should go out as strong as possible. It'd be nice. That's why one of the reasons I put Connor Coventry back in the side. He was brilliant in the Europa League game um, last week, and I do think he, should, he he deserves to play again. He really, really does. Other than that, it's pretty much as strong as I possibly think. So it's, you could argue um, Kara should rest for the game and be available for Sunday. Totally understandable. Totally understandable. But as I say, this is the starting eleven that I'm hoping we're going to see. So thank you very much for your time, guys. As always, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking on this. And um, I'm having a bit of technical difficulties with my streaming service at the minute. I've had to buy a new Fire Stick because my, my one just went kaput. And there's a bit of an issue with the, with the login details, which is a bit strange. So hopefully we'll be doing the watch along on Thursday. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I'll let you guys know on the Twitter account and or face, Facebook account that if that's going to happen. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy the rest of your week and hopefully see you on Thursday. If not, I'll see you Friday for the preview for the Palace game. All the best now. Take care.